My name is Huey Gardner. Um, I serve at St. Mary's on the Highlands as the rector. Um, that would be in other um, denominations or other systems of polity, a senior pastor, um, and I've been here for about 20 years now. St. Mary's on the Highlands was um, originally intended to be a summer Sunday school for families who regularly worshiped at Church of the Advent um, up 20th Street. The thought was that in the Highlands, in this area of Birmingham, the summers would be cooler. The families that were thinking this pretty quickly decided that they did not want to be just a summer Sunday school. They wanted to be a congregation, a mission church of the Diocese of Alabama. And so in 1887, they set off on that course and um, they originally were located on the corner um, of what we know as Brother Brian Park here in the South Side. Um, that building, um, they outgrew, it burned. Um, and they came to this corner, the corner of 19th and 12th, and um, built this space in 1891. The cornerstone is August of 1891. So we continue to worship in the space that they actually built um, very quickly after they set off on the course of being a, a parish, an actual parish. Where I'm sitting is the church that was constructed in 1891. So we continue to worship in this space. Um, we continue to use this space. This is where we gather on Sundays. Um, this is where we gather on particular feast days in a week. Um, sometimes we fill up the whole church. And um, in the most recent kind of Life that we've been living um, has been limited, face-to-face -face worship. We also do many, many things in the chancel, um, the area where typically the choir is seated. And um, we use that for morning prayer, Monday through Friday. Um, we have had small weddings in that area. So this space, um, the building, the architecture is all part of how we view ourselves. As we went through a recent renovation, it was very, very important that we tie what we would build and what we would utilize in the future to this space. And um, this space, um, its beauty, its simplicity, the windows are what guided us as we thought about what do we need to be doing for the next generation. And it's kind of interesting, we, we would sit in this space, reflect in this space, think about the, the folks in 1891, what were they thinking that we enjoy today? And that prompted us to think about what will a group 100 years down the road be thinking about what we have offered and what we have left for them and built for future generations. One of the things that's fascinating about this church is um, it attracts um, families who have moved into the Birmingham area, but this congregation continues to have families that go back to the earliest days of its founding. Um, in fact, there are several families that can actually state clearly and definitively church records, their own kind of family history of three or four generations being baptized in the baptismal font at St. Mary's. So there's a strong tie to this place with families and, um, and being where we're located on the south side, um, close to UAB, we also have families that come and um, join our common life. The Episcopal Church um, goes back to the earliest days of um, the colonies, the United States. Um, we were the branch of the Church of England in the United States, in the colonies. Eventually, through um, the Revolutionary War, through disagreements um, between the Church of England and the church here in the United States, what became the United States, um, we became our own church within the Anglican Communion. So we're related to the Church of England, um, the Anglican Communion, the worldwide Anglican Communion um, that includes um, many, many people from many, many different places, um, different continents, different um, countries, nationalities. Um, and we are the American Church, the Church of England that is here in the United States, the Anglican Church. This is a congregation that has always been remaking itself, rethinking itself. So it has gone through cycles of 
attracting families, um, building on the blocks of strong Christian education, youth programs. It has not been a church that has just rested on its history. It's always been kind of rethinking and re-envisioning itself. And I, I've kind of wondered about that and pondered that. And I think it goes back to the DNA that's in its blood from the earliest days when um, those early, early families realized they didn't want to just be something in the summer. They wanted to be something that was actually viable throughout the year. And that's what this congregation continues to do. Um, our worship is um, interesting. We use the American Prayer Book. Um, we sing some of the great hymns of the, the English church. Um, and we also um, have a strong outreach ministry. We pride ourselves on our pastoral care and education. Um, there are many, many details as you get into the life of the congregation that you realize, wow, this is a place that's not just sitting and waiting, but actively engaged in figuring out what is the church at this time and how do we witness um, to the world. There is a can-do spirit. Um, we recognize our limits, but we also are willing to stretch. And um, I think stretching is directly related to the gospel, to the witness that we offer to Christ. Um, this community, like every church, is not perfect, but I would say this community is striving to honor and to please God. And um, that's the most important piece of our life, uh, to build God's kingdom in our own lives and in the world. And I, I think this particular congregation takes that very seriously and strives to offer the kingdom of God out into the world.